We're up in your ribeye game. We took a ribeye, we smoked it, we made a horseradish smoked garlic cream sauce along with some crispy fried shallots. You guys wanna see this sandwich? Here we go. Can't wait to get started on this one. We are talking about a smoked ribeye sandwich. We're gonna add a couple ingredients in there that we like, you guys can do you. We're not gonna do reverse sear. This is all about smoked and we're gonna keep that temperature low, maybe about 200 degrees and barely, barely, barely bring it up and see what happens. About 1.3 pounds of ribeye. Beautiful spinalis right here, small eye, a lot of fat running through this. I have some bitter twine. I am just going to break it in half, just like that. And that's gonna protect that spinalis from separating. And this is true with any meat. If you uh, take butcher swan like this, a lot of times it makes it fatter, especially like on a filet or something. And if you're trying to get a longer cook time for like a longer smoke, you can imagine the thicker your meat, the more time mostly it takes to cook. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking for like a long, we wanted to get a ton of smoke in here and also be like a medium rare at the same time. So the longer it can smoke and the longer it can stay in the temperature we need it to, it's a benefit for us. Okay? Two seasonings today. We have our shake fat, salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. And we have Sure Shot Sid's roasted coffee. I just think those coffee notes with that smoke are gonna hit right. Probably have to open it. Probably my second bottle already. So we're just gonna work the sides and do the same thing all over the steak. All right, we're using our uh, meter thermometers today. Obviously, whatever wireless probes you guys have. So we're looking about the middle, about right there. All right, so now we're just gonna let it rock and roll, do its thing. We're at 200 degrees. I'm gonna let it smoke to about 125 degrees, maybe 123 for that carryover. It shouldn't carry over too much. But let's look in the pellet hopper so I can show you what we got going on. If you guys see the color variation, we got those hickory wood chips from Chris from Lone Star and obviously those smoking pecan pellets that we use all the time. Uh, just to reiterate, because it has been mentioned a couple times since I have been doing this. Um, as far as I know, you can only use the wood chips in the Lone Star grills if you get the wood chips from Chris. They're, specifically cut to a certain diameter that fits his machine, his auger, his everything. So it's one of, those, one of those exclusive style systems that he has. So I do not recommend putting the wood chips in any other pellet grill. That's on you if you try it. So just the uh, Lone Star Grill only. We have three shallots and we're gonna simply thinly slice these. I'm just setting two cloves of garlic on there to get a little smoky so it could go in our sauce later. Once the shallots are sliced thin, I just took a fork and roughly went through it, just trying to break them up as much as possible. A lot of people like to soak them buttermilk or regular milk. Show a little trick here. So we got a little like um, homemade season, okay? Um, it's got a little spice to it. Whatever you wanna do, all purpose, you can do salt. You're gonna have to season before or after anyways. So the idea is the salt gets in there and we know what happens with salt and vegetables. It pulls out the moisture. So instead of soaking this in buttermilk or regular milk, I want to add the seasoning to this. Let it pull out that moisture for about 15, 20 minutes because I don't want these shallots to be super thick when we fry them. I want it to be like, um, what's like a shoestring, like angel thin, you know, whatever it is thin. Making the sauce is kind of like our go-to quarter cup sour cream, equal parts mayonnaise, about a tablespoon of horseradish, about a tablespoon of mustard. This just happens to be the sweet hot mustard. Honestly, any mustard will work. We've used spicy brown, we've used Dijon, we've used yellow. It's just that tang that you want. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, maybe like a teaspoon. Splash a half and half just to thin it out. Give that a mix. Like anything in life, you need to taste your food, if you think it needs more, add it. We're gonna add another roughly tablespoon of horseradish because I love horseradish. That's it right there. 
The bread choice is yours. We have a three cheese semolina. They had jalapeno, they have um, sourdough, they have whole grains. I just thought it might be a good one for this one. I'm just eyeballing the best piece. Cut some slices out of it. Alrighty, hopefully you guys can get a snapshot of this. You see how all the onions are kind of like wilted? Starting to pull the moisture out. Roughly 20 minutes somewhere through there. So that we're gonna use that moisture to our advantage. Simply enough, just a little bit of flour and we're just gonna coat this completely. Oil is up to temp, about 375. Don't overdo it. And that's what I'm looking for right there. Very thin, not over dredged. About an hour and 45 minutes later. We're gonna let it rest. I'm still gonna keep that garlic on there while the grill shuts down to try to get a little softer. A little bit more smoke flavor. I pulled my smoked garlic off. You probably won't be able to smash this like a roasted garlic. You never get up to that high temperature. So we're just gonna take a garlic press, get those smoky notes in there. You can absolutely do roasted garlic if you wanted to, but always in trying to incorporate those flavors. A little butter down. And I'm just gonna to toast one side of the bread. Alrighty, after our steak is rested, just to give you an idea, it never went over 126. We pulled it at 125 and it never rose over 126. So when they talk about caribou cooking, it's true. You just gotta remember how much heat is built up in the meat and how, what temperature you got. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, so. Cut that chunk of fat out right there. Show you guys really quick. Mm. And it's just so soft. It's a whole different texture feel when you smoke it versus reverse sear or anything. Just beautiful. Mm. Mm. Mm, that coffee rub. <laughs> it's good. That's a good combination of flavors. Oh boy, that is good. That is super good. Man. <laughs> we'll try to leave a link uh, listed below in the description for that coffee rub if you guys are interested. Got a beautiful toast. One side, we're gonna smear some boars and cheese on there. It's a garlic and herb, we love it. That other side's gonna have that sauce that we just made with that smoked garlic, horseradish. Top that with some of those crispy fried shallots. And there we go. That's a hell of a smoked ribeye sandwich right there. Mm. I gotta be honest with you, the shallots are on point, the sauce is on point, and the ribeye, I haven't had a smoked ribeye in forever, just purely smoked. It's a game changer, I'm telling you. It I don't is know amazing. Why I don't, I don't yeah. know why I don't more often. Shout out to uh, Sure Shot Sids. That coffee rub was perfect. Looks good. Make sure you make enough of these little fried doohickeys on the side that you can just sinful good. <laughs> mm, so crispy, light, not over breaded. Love it. All right, here we go. 
Looks good to me. Wipe your mouth first, so then pat yourself on the back. <laughs> I probably added a hair more boards into what needed to be, but that garlic, horseradish sauce, the smoke, the sweetness, kind of like the smokiness of the ribeye, everything's tender. Even the butter from the bread, I think even the mm. bread, because it's that Asiago mm. three cheese bread. I think the rosemary bread would be good with this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's damn good. That'd be on a restaurant menu for sure. Mm. Mm. That is super good. That is super good. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. That's gonna that's gonna eat. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Golly. <laughs> that is super good. If babe. you get one more bite now, I'm gonna count that against you so uh -huh. that way we can share it equally. Mm. Oh, no, you took it all. Oh, no, there's none left. <laughs> mm. That's a winner.